<laughs> and by that's, then it's too late. That's how we lure them in. <laughs> exactly. We have a huge, huge announcement, and then you know at the end we don't announce. Huge anything. announcement coming at the end yeah. of this show today. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's good. Big announcement. Yeah, yeah. We'll just do that from now on. All of our shows will have a huge. Yeah, announcement it, it'll at the be end. huge if true. If you're yeah. watching right now, stay tuned throughout this show because the <laughs> yeah. announcement that we're going to make it's going to blow your mind. It is. You will it's not massive. believe what's going to happen. It's it's incredible stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's how the nightly news does it. Like, it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah, just tease that that's going to happen. Maybe prizes, maybe a special guest, maybe not. You'll have to wait to find out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do that. Now we've pissed everybody off. Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is Dreads with Benefits, our weekly podcast where we gather a roundtable of experts to talk about the tech topics of the day. We've got a bunch of stuff we're going to get to today. So if you've seen the title here of what we're, we're going through, we've got uh, Facebook's new Area 404 that we're going to talk about. We've got some new uh, video games that are coming out and some retro games that are coming out, which I kind of want to talk about that. Uh, New Chinese bus, which is just a strange way to segue (laughs) into that. (laughs) Everybody's waiting for the Chinese bus news. And, of course, we're going to talk about the Olympics. But before we do that, let's uh, see who we've got here. I'm your host, Greg Nibbler, and to my right today... Uh, My name is Rick Stella. I'm one of the staff writers here for Digital Trends. Excellent. Yep. And hey, this is uh, Nick Moke. I'm the managing editor at Digital Trends. All right. And on the end, we've got a very special guest joining us today. Hi, I'm Andrew Mayer. Um, I've been a game designer and developer for the last 25 years. So that is, I, I can only imagine the things you've seen in 25 years of doing game things, development. Horrible like, things. That horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and not even with gaming. It's just, <laughs> I've seen games yeah. exploding off the <laughs> sea beams of horizon. And <laughs> now with the pinnacle of Pokemon going on, I mean, it's just got to be terrible. We're all back to where we started yeah, again. Yeah, it's, right? It's just, <laughs> round and that round, seems to be right. the theme for everything. So uh, we'll get into some of that here in just a minute. But to start off with, tomorrow, and I think a lot of people have already forgotten that this is happening, but the Olympics are happening. I don't even know if oh, we're allowed that, to say that thing. That yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. We're probably not allowed to say Olympics, but I'm going to do it anyway. We'll see what happens. Can't tweet it. Right. right. Yeah, you can't tweet it. You can't. Uh, I know athletes aren't allowed to post gold, silver, or bronze. Um, and there's all these other restrictions they're trying to put on it. So we're probably just yeah, like no good health. Just, yeah. Um, yeah. No <laughs> good safety. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Zika virus and right. everything else. Oh, and don't swallow the water. That was one of the things I just <laughs> found out today. I guess if you swallow up to three tablespoons is all, all it'll take of the water from the bay will get you violently ill. Oh. And so they're they're warning all the athletes not to dunk their heads underwater. Um, yeah, don't whatever you do, don't <laughs> accidentally swallow any of the water. It's they're saying that for the <laughs> pools too, even. Right? Yeah, 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 like don't even take your like chance. Great to be a swimmer. Yeah, yeah so. right. Well, I know. And in those pools, I remember Michael Phelps talking about it. They. He's like, yeah, no, we openly pee in that pool, but that's way safer than swimming in the bay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, some of the things they are doing though this time that's going to be unique. It's definitely going to have the most content. Um, probably streamed, well, definitely the most content streamed ever for an Olympics game. It's going to be over 6,000 hours, I think is what uh, uh, Xfinity is doing. So Comcast actually doing something I shudder to compliment Comcast <laughs> no. on this podcast, but, but I guess I kind of have to in that their X1 app, and this is an article from uh, our own Ryan Juanita talking about this, and they're going to be doing some pretty amazing things with it where they've set up this whole platform and they've got not only the television content because NBC is the, is the broadcaster, but they're also going to be having um, live streams piped right in there. So if they mm. go to commercial and you want to keep on watching something, you can switch to the live streamed um, internet channel. And just watch it right from there, oh, wow. which is kind of a uh, unique way to go about it. I mean, at least whether you're interested in the Olympics or not. I mean, I want to watch just to see what's going to happen with all the side stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just patiently <laughs> waiting for something to go wrong. Right, you watching know, people yeah. drop as they slowly get yeah. Zika in the background. <laughs> uh, but it's it's a pretty pretty unique format. Like they're definitely going all in, and I think if like integrating those two things into the one platform like that could really be great going forward for other events. Having the option of live broadcast or picking and choosing exactly what kind of content you want to get. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Or I mean, I was thinking when I saw, I mean, the, the 6,000 hours is like the headline that yeah. grabbed your attention with the Comcast <laughs> thing. And I can't help thinking that Comcast is going the wrong direction with giving us like more choice. Like everything is going towards more curated like snippets, quick. I just want to watch 60 seconds on the bus, yeah. move on to the new thing and get like a headline out of it. Like our attention span is so short now. And Comcast is like, so would you like 6,000 hours of Olympics <laughs> right. coverage? That's um, a good point. I don't know if like we have the attention span for that anymore to actually watch like live events especially i mean some of these things take a really long time 
I don't know yeah. how many people are actually interested in watching things to their conclusion. I think we want we all want like highlight reels and finish line stuff. You know? Yeah. Like, are, are there any? Is there such a thing as like an Olympic junkie? Like, do people sit around and watch the Olympics for eight hours on end? <laughs> you know, a guy who's so excited about the yeah, six right? Hours. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I like, don't have to like, leave my house for a month. You know? Yeah. He's got a spreadsheet. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Right. right. He knows wait for minute that. to minute what he's watching. Slovakian weightlifting team man. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just cannot wait. They do have they do have one package. It's called the Gold Zone, which I guess they're kind of they're mar- marketing it after the red zone nfl's red zone where it's just going to show uh medal ceremonies or like close to medal ceremonies like the events about to end right. and so you can flip around to that kind of stuff so maybe See, that actually goes along with what you're yes, saying that yeah caters that would be more like of the short snippet. attention span right. theory that people just want like show me what happened right yeah well, okay on to the next right. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> that's it i'm bored um so that's that's what xfinity is doing there's also going to be of course a lot of uh, 4K video that's going to be out there and 360 degree images that um, Getty is going to be putting out. So mm-hmm. different things and things that you can use with VR headsets. And with that, Samsung is going to be having a lot of VR content that's going to be available. And they're not saying it's not going to be live broadcast. They, uh, from what I'm reading here, and I don't think everybody knows exactly what it's going to be yet. It's going to be slightly delayed, but starting on Saturday after the opening ceremonies, they're going to start having that content available. Mm-hmm. Um, where let's see, probably yeah, eighty-five hours or something like that. They, it's hard to say exactly how much they'll get, but that I think is going to be where we could see some actual interesting tech being debuted. You know, because this this is the future, as we've talked about before. I think anyway that VR and sports are going to seem to go hand in hand, especially when they tested it out. You know, with the NCAA March Madness stuff. Again, I probably can't say March Madness, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bleep every other the word that I said. Again. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Pull the power. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think with this, you know, with the, the Olympics style, this could be a really good debut for that kind of technology for a lot of people. What, yeah. what do you guys think? I think, and we've had this conversation before too. I know mm-hmm. you really like, like you said, the NCAA games. Yeah. Um, but it also, you'd have to be watching it by yourself, I imagine. You couldn't be doing this like a group of friends and like, just like, <laughs> hey, I'm going in, you know, yeah. like put it on and you're just like, just sitting there watching for an hour or something. There's but, only one person that has it. Everyone else is just like, what's happening? Yeah, tell yeah. us, tell us. Yeah. What's yeah. the Slovakian weightlifting team? <laughs> what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Look to the left. Look to the left. Where are they at now? I mean, if you've got a tech startup and you you're not sure about getting your next round of funding, the Olympics is probably one of the best things that ever happened to you, right? Like, like yeah. to get your stuff out there. I mean, and to push it out to a big audience, right? It's great. Even if you're, even if people aren't strapping the headsets on, Samsung's got that label in VR. People are like, oh, I want to check that out. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's you know, Olympics have always been good for that, right? Right. From, from yeah. Well, that's that's feeds to watches to whatever. Yeah. And that, yeah, and that's pretty much it. It's a money maker for for a lot of companies. But yeah, definitely advertising. I mean, you're. I don't think you're going to find much bigger audience reach. You know, than the Olympics. If you Not really anymore. want to get something globally, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's this is this is where it's at. So I, I think what could be cool with VR is if is not so much being t- at the events, and th- that would be great because it'd give you like a front row seat. But like, oh, maybe seeing some of the like panoramic views of Brazil, you know, for people who might mm-hmm. not have traveled down yeah. there, and just like some of those sweeping footage, like that, like NBC has where they have, like flyovers. I think that could be really awesome and really. Um, may draw some people to it where I know it's like going to be focused purely on the events themselves, but seeing like Brazil from like a first person view would be kind of crazy from like a drone view like that. Right. Mm. Fly over the favelas or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Oh, another hear the, game hear fight. The yeah, right. You're there. It'll be yeah. good. Good thing Bonus. I'm at home in my blanket. <laughs> Bonus content. <laughs> well, all of that, it'll start rolling out over this weekend. And uh, again, there's a lot of articles at digitaltrends.com. You can check out, check out Ryan's article. If you have Comcast Xfinity, you can, you can see what they offer. Um, moving on to something else with VR, and this is kind of big news today. Facebook, as we know, is really pushing hard into this and really wants to develop virtual reality and a bunch of different things. Like they've got all their drones where they want to spread Internet to the entire world via drones and different kind of plans and secretive stuff. And uh, they have now set up an entire facility for it called Facebook's Area 404, which I believe it's 22,000 square feet. And they're combining a bunch of different departments to be all under one umbrella or one room anyway, so they can interact with each other. Um, All kinds of different things. There's apparently some group on there, which I didn't know this, called Building 8, which is a top secret R&D wing headed by former DARPA DARPA director, uh, Regina Dugan. Yeah, I know. It's like DARPA. That just sounds intimidating. It's not like they're going to grab all your data, so it's, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right? Oh, God, yeah, they know everything about you. And you've got DARPA involved. <laughs> um, giant 3D printers. And... Yeah, 3D printers. They've got uh, some... Uh, they have an electron microscope. Electron uh, microscope, a powerful five-axis water jet that can cut mm-hmm. through aluminum, steel, and granite. 
so all these tools are just there available for them to use. And What's develop. gonna be funny is that it's no matter what, that's just, something's gonna jam, and they spend all this money on it. You know, like something's still like going to mess up. Right? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. the fifth axis is broken again. Yeah, right. God dang it! You drop another million. Yeah, you the fix repair, it. The repair guy's super happy about that. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> he just like signs off on everything. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> Man, seeing those pictures though, with like all of that actual heavy duty hardware branded with like Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what a weird. Could you have imagined five years ago that Facebook would have this hardware lab where they have laser cutters and CNC machines yeah. and and uh, like an electron microscope. Like that is strayed so far from what humble Facebook started as. Right. Like, and now we're talking about, you know, them building hardware and all these other projects and having a secret R and D building <laughs> headed by a former DARPA. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, what a crazy Couple of years is better. But for they're Facebook. always spaghetti at the wall, right? They're always like, they're always like, we're just gonna buy, we're gonna spend a billion dollars, we're gonna buy something, and then we're gonna figure out how to use it. At the time, like, you know, like, well, the, like VR, right? You're like, what are they mm -hmm. doing? Why are they buying this company? And then a couple of years later, you're like, okay, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they figure it out, you know, and like, or you can see where they can shove advertising into the middle of it. I don't know where you put it into a CNC machine right, right yet. But. <laughs> I think like in their DNA, like connecting people and being social is like what what they've started on, and in a very right. basic sense with creating a like a web page. And yeah, who knew that they were gonna be turning out like this big? But they are finding new ways to bring people together in groundbreaking ways. As we long as you thought. can shove advertising in the middle. Exactly of it. right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the key. Right. It's a sandwich with that with a where with uh, with advertising in the middle, right? Or extract people's data, <laughs> and, exactly. and work together. <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, that's that's the thing. Is like, what are they going to come up with with all of this stuff? I mean, definitely, you know, MySpace didn't get a twenty-two thousand square foot building. So <laughs> yeah, how's, <laughs> yeah, how's Tom doing, doing right? these days? Yeah, Tom. just <laughs> have that same white T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, who did they oh, yeah. sell to? That's totally random. But I thought Tom made some money off of that. Oh, I'm sure he I did. I think he did. In the end, but anyway, good old Tom. That's total. Mm -hmm. We'll do a where is. Tom so what's the segment. VR yeah. angle on this? I've been. I is so yeah. So they're they've got. Um, they intend to use the site to build new, according to this article here at Digital Trends, uh, to build new VR hardware for Oculus and its 360 degree camera. So they're gonna. Okay. The they said the software on both Open Cellular and Facebook's around 360 may be open source, but the hardware they want to build all that internally. And so work on that um, there. Where they go with it, that's kind of the speculation. I think it's just the idea that they're combining all of these other, other, other uh, you know, facets into one room. Clearly, they're going to work together on, on some of these different things, drones, VR, something with that. And it's but, kind of up for speculation. Huh? Here, here's my theory. This is where the first holodeck is born. <laughs> right. This building. right. There's something really hooly about the whole thing too. Like, yeah. you know, like very, like it's almost a parody of itself. Like, like who's going to be in there, you know, like. <laughs> You know, people be coming. To, oh, this is our. You know, nobody, nobody will be in there at like right. two o'clock in the afternoon. Or <laughs> <laughs> They're all just playing basketball with wadded up pieces of paper. Or something. Right, or right. robots. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so we'll see what happens with it. But it's definitely, it's kind of cool that they did give everybody a look inside of it. You know, did, did see see some of the pictures of it. But uh, where is it? Go? Their headquarters and. In San Francisco? Or it's what? in Menlo Park. Yeah. Menlo Park. South, yeah. South, 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 South of San Francisco. Yeah. South they, where they own everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just the city of Facebook. Where the Google doesn't own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's one or the other. Uh, so, that, so anyway, that was the big news that came out about Facebook this week. So let us know what you think, too, if you're watching live or if you're watching via podcast, you know, where you think they could be taking this technology to. What do you think they're going to do? What does DARPA have to do with it? I mean, um, <laughs> weather control. I don't know what's going to go on there. I'm sure the Illuminati's involved somehow. G.I. Joe, Cobra. I'll figure it out. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, moving on to the next topic um, has to do with actually going back with some more retro, uh, retro aspects. And it's it's with some new gaming systems that are being announced. Um, I mean, a little bit of retro, a little bit not. There's the Xbox One S, which came out. And, you know, we we talked about that on the other show, Close to the Metal, where it's it's I mean, it looks different than the Xbox One. But really, it, there's not a whole lot different other than the fact that it's got a really great uh, video player. I mean, that's that's a good aspect. It of sort it. of do, does, like, uh, I was talking to Matt about it, our mm -hmm. computing editor, and he was saying it, if it's the best the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player yeah. on the market, and it's the cheapest. You know, and it's like what PS3 did for Blu-rays back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. It was right. like the cheapest Blu-ray player. And, um, and so, I, I don't know, I, I imagine if you were in the market to get an Xbox One and didn't already have one, and had a 4K TV, that it would make sense. Right. Then you'd be buying the one it. that are coming out with next year. Right. right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Choose, do you want this now? or <laughs> You want to wait next year, pay right. a little extra, and get again. VR? Yeah. Yeah, Andrew, do you have any thoughts on that about this Xbox One? I mean, it's I, I I mean, I, well, so I've been thinking a lot about this, and I wrote an article for you with you guys about it. I mean, it, it's it's a 
it's a good interim step, right? They've always got to make it smaller. It's definitely uh -huh. good to get the consumer box and get it all, like they got rid of the brick and they got it down, I guess. And the other thing is it's fast enough to lock the frame rate, right? So it's good. I mean, somebody's going to want the low end. People are still, you know, people were still buying 360s up until, yeah. you know, up until recently. So Right, I mean, yeah, they just stopped production yeah. on those. I mean, and you got to have these boxes in people's homes or, you know, when you put out a game, nobody's going to buy it, right? right? Like, you know, somebody to play it. So I think it's smart for them to to have locked the box together and, and gotten that together and just have that in there. What is it? It's like what two ninety nine to three ninety nine based on how much memory you and also getting a bigger believe, drive in yeah. there is smart too, yeah. right? You just got to lock it in, and then some. You know, as long as people can play the games. The interesting question to me is, will the what what the developers are going to end up supporting in like a year and a half to two years? Yeah, right. Because it's like when the, you know, it's not. It's it's every time you put a new iPhone out in the world or whatever device out in the world, you suddenly got to you know the developers got to make sure that their game is supporting that to some level, and that just makes things more expensive and more complicated. So that's what I'm wondering. Like, I haven't talked to any of my friends who are working on that kind of stuff because, mm -hmm. to be honest with them, a lot of them have moved to PC. And But that's the other thing, too. Like, this thing is going to be, you know, part of their, their march towards aligning it with PC and making sure stuff works that way as well. Yeah. And so it's not a bad move on their part, right? they got to have something at the low end. They can't just, right. you know, and they don't want to. And, and I'm sure this box is much cheaper to make than the than the old one was. Than the big giant one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it does give them something in the interim before the, what is it, the Neo comes out this fall, so PlayStation Neo and it, so oh, there's some competition box, right, right there, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Scorpio is next year, so they've got the Expo Xbox coming out. But the other thing that uh, is being announced too is Nintendo's NX, which their new system, which sounds from what I've been reading, and again, this article's at digitaltrends.com, sounds like they're trying to bridge the gap between mobile and actual <laughs> consoles. And it's it's interesting how they're going to be doing it. The the titles they're coming out with are clearly meant to go to the the standard titles you know you got a new mario right. game mario zelda, zelda like game kirby probably in sure. there somewhere uh, yeah. yeah boom, sure. boom. Uh, pokemon. donkey kong pokemon oh, pokemon go yep. figure those are the three yeah. they're guaranteeing that that will be on there to start off with mario zelda and pokemon um and i think then, jeff van camp is in line for one right now isn't he? <laughs> He was going to be on the show, but he's outside of Toys R Us. Yeah, he's, he's not in the line. Yeah. Get his position. Good idea. So they've got that, and then the, it sounds like they're going to they're gearing up to work with more third party vendors too. Like they're working on deals with Activision and Ubisoft and everybody else. Um, Ubisoft or Ubisoft? I always mess that up. I think it's Ubisoft. I think it's Ubisoft. Ubi. Okay, Ubi. I'll fix that in post too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just fix everything in post yep, production. Everything in post. <laughs> Never make a mistake. All right. Uh, so yeah, so they're working with them to make some to get some more games in there. What do you guys think about this move? You know, compared to what everybody else is doing, trying to trying to match up, you know, PC with consoles as far as Xbox matching this mobile style. Um, I you know Nintendo's always crazy, right? Like, yeah. They're often and sometimes they're crazy and it bombs, and sometimes they're crazy and it changes the world, right? Like mm -hmm. I mean, like nobody can do what they did with Go. I mean, even Nintendo didn't do that, but nobody can do what they did with Go but Nintendo. And so to put out a port, like a, a pi hybrid portable, I mean, also they want to own the hardware market. They're not giving mm -hmm. up. Like, they're pretty sure that the smartphone fad is going to end any day now, and they have been for a decade, right? <laughs> and, and they're going to be there when it happens, right? right, with the hardware that you've been waiting yeah. for. So, you know, I mean, I, I love them for sure. I mean, I, out of all the boxes, I mean, the other ones feel like everything else. This is the one that I'd want to buy. Yeah. Right. Because it's it's crazy. Like, what's it going to do? How's it going to work? Plus, you can mm -hmm. if you can pop it out and play the game on the go and come back and it's sa the same game. Yeah. You know. And yeah. And going back to actual cartridge style, whatever that thing's going to be. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's, it's, it's a look. dongle, really. Right. Because it's like it's it's going to be 32 megs of or 32 gigs of, of RAM and then re a flash RAM. And then after that, you're going to have to store it on the device anyway. So it's a okay. it's a download after the initial. After the initial, oh, that's install. the rumors. So okay. it's kind of like them, they're just mashing up like an N64 and a Wii and their 3DS, you know, like into one thing. One of these, like, one hey, of these. I don't know, the DS is awesome and people <laughs> like the Wii, so let's make it together. And which, like you said, I'm sure it's going to do well. You know, people, I mean, Nintendo has people, um, obviously, loyal fan base. I mean, we saw with Pokemon Go and like, Super Mario fan base and Zelda fan base, but yeah, I feel like it's their only way to do something like that to stand out from. Sony and Microsoft in that way. It's to just, kind of just buckle down and go. Yeah, and just be down. wild and off the wall and hopefully you know, card. something sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Because every time they touch anything mobile, right, their stock goes through the roof. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. they're like, we're not doing this. And then the stock crashes. Again. Right. And that's happened three <laughs> times now. Yeah. And so, like, they are committed to this hardware thing. Like, they think that's their future. And, like, you know, Sega stopped doing it years ago. Right. I mean, you know, um, Sony and, and Xbox have really jumped on the bandwagon where they're saying like it's, you know, off the shelf hardware. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. all existing stuff. And they're like original hardware, making a deal with the developer. Make it was it NVIDIA that's doing their their. I believe uh, so. Yeah. Um, the, that's their. Ch I mean, it's all, we'll know more next month. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're showing up and saying, like, we're going to keep the hardware thing going old school. So we'll see what happens. But I'm, I'm excited about it. 
I want to check it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that, and you're right. I think that's the bottom line is everybody's like, what is this? Eh, I, I still want to try it. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is, I'm in. And I do love Mario. So, yeah, you'll get me on that. Uh, so that's Nintendo's thing. But also uh, going along the lines of the retro. And I, I'm bringing this up because this was trending so huge today. And I saw a lot of people sharing this. I didn't. I don't remember ever playing these games. But you never played Aladdin? No, the I never played Aladdin. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, it's, it's Disney has uh, teamed up with, let's see, who is it? GOG.com? Yeah, the, good old games. Good old games. Yeah. Good old games. See, there we go. <laughs> Fix that post. Uh, so uh, to, to bring out uh, Aladdin, The Lion King, and The Jungle Book onto a PC to play. And these were games, oh, of course. Oh, you know, so good. Look Aladdin. at that. So good. Yes. Such great platforming. First great like animated game that looked like close to what the movies yeah. looked like. You know what it was? I just I never had a Super NES. So that was, that was what it was, I think. I don't know. I didn't play these. But we're playing the video right now if you're watching. But it's huge. So, I mean, what yeah. do you guys think about this, about bringing these back here, these 16-bit Games. I think people love Clearly, retro. Rick's excited about it. <laughs> yeah. right. I I hadn't thought about the Aladdin 16 bit game until I got into work this morning and saw that they were doing this. And um, yeah, I mean it. It. I think people love retro. I think people uh, will always spend what is it, like a couple bucks. Yeah, it's, let's see. You can get all three. Something? Well, it's no. It's actually it's nine ninety nine. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, each individual for nine ninety nine. Yeah, or all three or for, for twenty nine ninety seven. Oh, there's no discount there for the the three. So yeah, twenty nine ninety seven to get all three of them. Well, then I might. Wait when it comes down. <laughs> no, really though, like p- people love retro, you know. And I yeah. think Rare did a huge retro collection for the Xbox last year. Something mm-hmm. they came out like thirty games, and people ate that up. Um, and right. I, I think. I mean, I think it'll do well, especially something like that that's like nostalgic and really classic. Like mm-hmm. I liked playing it when I was. Younger. So you'll pay. You would be willing to pay if it went down maybe twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. I'd pay three <laughs> bucks for it. Three bucks. Okay. Four or five. Right. Yeah. <laughs> for for but, those games. Yeah. Did you guys ever play any of those games? I did. I think I played the Aladdin one. Like at friends' houses, right. I never had I was the same system. Way, yeah. But uh-huh. like, I was watching the video there, and I definitely yeah. have fond memories of that. I love seeing retro games revived like this. I mean, I would re- way rather pe- see people pay twenty seven or whatever right. the hell you're gonna end up paying yeah. than yeah. like pirating it. Which in <laughs> yeah. most cases, w- with the games that this site revives, that was the only right. option to play them on a modern system prior to them picking it up and republishing it for five ninety nine or whatever. I was browsing through the site. Um, and in, in addition to this, I mean, I just found a ton of classics. Like I was like, I was like, oh, the, I can get this King's Quest five for six dollars. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> like I just found a bunch of stuff that I wanted on that site. It's, it's um, never as good as the first time. I know. I mean, you can only King's go Quest so is far with nostalgia, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, I love seeing that stuff revived. And I'd like to think that some kid is gonna buy it and have the same experience that I did when I was ten right. too. You know, and get to experience it. I wonder what it even looks like through a kid's eyes today. You know, now. They're like, what they've this grown sucks. up with, like, yeah, what the hell is this? Um, it's giving me a headache. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> it's so blurry. Yeah. Uh, there, there is, I mean, NES is coming out with that classic edition later on this year, oh, yeah. which that I do want. Mm-hmm. You know, 30 titles for fifty nine ninety nine. That's, I, I can see myself buying that one for sure. But yeah, so retro games, those are, that is the big movement right here. Everybody's trying to figure out where they're pushing their content, right, and how they're doing it. So. Yeah, and I'm curious, Andrew, do you have any thoughts on this, you know, just from the development standpoint? Yeah, I like, mean, I mean, I think Disney's just, you know, Disney shut down their studios last year, and they've got mm-hmm. a ton of content, so, and, you know, they're, they're make, doing everything with deals with external studios now. So I'm just wondering, I'm, I can't quite figure out how all the puzzle pieces figure together, but I'm sure this is part of that, right? Good Old Games isn't Steam, so they probably had some kind of partnership. They're figuring out mm-hmm. where they're going to be putting content, how they're going to be moving it out. You know, there's always, my, bra- my brain, because I've been on the, ba- on, on the you know, seen them from the other side for so long, is always like, where's the deals coming from? What are they, you know, who's, mm-hmm. who's, who's signing the contracts? Why are they signing them? You know, all that kind of stuff. So something's going on. I'm, hopefully it'll open the doors for more of their, other, their, you know, their old content to come out, and they'll figure out ways to do this. You know, okay. get, get some cool stuff out, like their old Tron games and some of the right. other stuff that they used to have. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Okay. Tron well, 2.0. That's right? A de- that's a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> but a great game. Right? <laughs> well, there we go. So that is some of the news coming out about games. All right, we talked about a Chinese bus, I, I promised you. <laughs> so it's a real thing. I've got to deliver yeah. on it now. Uh, this is the, bri- the big news. No, it's, it is this, though, and uh, we're s- switching gears completely. And we talked about this, I think, probably a few months ago, maybe yeah. in an, another episode, that China was working on this new style of bus. And we've got a video of it here if you're watching, and I'll try to describe it for podcasting purposes. <laughs> it's essentially like a, a streetcar, but it's two lanes wide, and then it's also uh, seven feet tall off the ground. So it rides on these rails that kind of straddle two car lanes. And um, seven feet up, they've got this huge platform where it's basically a giant a giant moving platform where they can sit hundreds of people and this thing goes over traffic because it straddles it. So it's above the traffic itself. 
and they've they've finally got one out. They're testing it right now, and it's an actual working version of this bus that they want to roll out onto the streets. I'm assuming in Beijing, and it's pretty it's pretty neat. I gotta say, it's pretty cool. I can't believe there's not more people trying to get on here. <laughs> yeah, you know, right? like anything I know about you know things in China is that there's a million people trying to do everything at once. Yeah, but um, I have a few. Like, what if? You you know people are lazy drivers sometimes you know yeah and like <laughs> I could just see like they're so close see like hitting the side or something somebody I don't know. decides to take a left hand turn and just and just it. doesn't think about it like uh -huh. you know and not so much even lazy drivers a lot of like really air, like just airheaded driving and just uh -huh. dumb drivers that I don't know this would be crazy does it alert you or anything when it's coming up behind you I don't or yeah I don't know it's, it's got those big lights on yeah, there yeah. it's got yeah. those giant lights yeah. I guess you'd see. But yeah, I, I have like when it, when the view goes to underneath it, I just think like driving in there would be incredibly disorienting, right? Because you're yeah. just moving along at sixty miles an hour, and you're surrounded by like trees flying by and stuff, and then suddenly this thing swoops Whoa. up from behind you, and then you just have like static walls moving at the same speed you are next to you, and, and you're just dark. in a tunnel that yeah, follows right, you. Right. Yeah, lights on. And really they, got, they got lights down. on. Yeah, they cool. do. Have, they do have. They do have lights, yeah. but it'd just be weird to have this like thing that's suddenly static and and moving alongside you. Yeah, or um, going a different speed, and you're going under it, and it's yeah. like it's the most like Ralph McQuarrie Blade Runner thing I've ever seen anybody <laughs> yeah, have ever really though. Is. I mean, it's cool in that sense. Like it's like it looks like real like retro futurism come to life. Like it's awesome, right? Yeah, seventies, eighties, nineties stuff. Totally. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's something you would so, envision. Yeah, thank God in... they built one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they did. They I'm actually impressed by how quick that happened because I remember the the, yeah, the story about that like six months ago or something was right? not that long ago yeah. and. It's one of those things that you're like, yeah, that'll never happen. <laughs> right. And then six months later, China Boom. has it yeah. for real. We've said that a few th few times on this show before. Right. <laughs> said that about the Flyboard Air too. I, I want to know, like, does, are they gonna? Can you own? It says seven feet tall, right? So uh, you you can't drive like a tall truck or anything, or I don't. Would do, that turn into like a speed do they have situation? A lot of tall trucks? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I don't know. You go around the bus, and, bus yeah. and it can't go a lot of places because it's like fifteen feet tall. Right. right. Yeah. 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 So it's too tall. They were saying I was looking at something where they were saying it's too tall to go a lot of places. So, so they'll figure it out. It's gonna go like back and forth, just like one mile. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll ride it. I'll get on it for one for one trip. Right. Maybe All we'll right. Have some in Portland, and we can ride around on it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there we go. So that is the Chinese bus. Um, we did, we did promise. I just like saying, <laughs> breaking news. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Chinese the Chinese bus. bus. It has landed. <laughs> uh, we did promise uh, some big news, though, at the end. And so this is this is what it's going to be. Uh, Nick, maybe, I don't know. Should we tease something well, or we, not? We can't, just give a big teaser. Yes. can't give all the details. But we can say that you should come back to Digital Trends tomorrow. We have a big yeah. project. Uh, if you go to dt10.com right now, there's a little teaser for it. Uh, there's not very much there, but tomorrow there will be the first the first chapter of this great saga. Yeah. Okay, the, the the book opens tomorrow. Maybe we so come back to yeah. DT, come back to DT tomorrow, yep. and there will we, we have a big project we've been working on for a very long time, and, and tomorrow is a big day. Maybe we have a teaser video that we could no. Okay, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a no. DT10.com. So go and check that out tomorrow. You guys, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, and uh, doing the show. Andrew, thanks a lot for joining sure. us yeah, today. Thanks. Enjoyed it. Um, if you are watching right now, of course, you can always leave your comments on the video and uh, let us know what you're thinking. If you're listening via podcast, send us an email, podcast at digitaltrends.com, and let us know. Uh, tomorrow, live on the site, usually we do tomorrow's show at 2 p.m. We're going to be doing it at 1 p.m. tomorrow for Between the Streams, so hop back in for that and watch everything else there on YouTube and check out all the articles, and we'll be back next week with another episode.